Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to sublimate a mouse pad. This is a die sublimation mouse pad blank and we are going to be creating this here. This is a Minecraft themed mouse pad personalized and I'm going to do a separate video on this because you may be wondering how am I able to make a copyright product? Well, Minecraft has something very interesting. I'll put it in a different video. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you step by step the whole process. In the description of the video, I have links to all of the products that I use. And so if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the comment section. But let's get started. All right, now we have our mouse pad here. This is the image that we are going to die sublimate. And I'm just using preview. I set the image up in Photoshop, but I'm using preview to print. This is on the Mac. You can use the um, option on the PC, whatever you have. But we're going to go ahead and go to print and we're going to select the die sublimation printer. In my case, I have the Epson EcoTank 2720 and I have my preset die sublimation settings. So let me show you what those are. I have a letter. I can go up to legal on this printer. And if I go to layout I don't really have anything there color matching I let the printer do it paper handling I just leave all of that but we go to print settings and you can see mirror image because there is uh, text here we have to print in a mirror image so that when you sublimate it puts it in the right direction we're going to even though I have sublimation print uh, paper I'm just going to print on plain paper and the quality is uh, the print quality is set to the highest, and I'm using a USB uh, cable to my printer. You don't want to print wirelessly. Um, and so once we have that, we're going to go ahead and click print. So here is the image on the sublimation transfer paper. As you can see, it's mirrored. I actually printed this with a bleed, and in printing terminology, that means there's a slight overhang of the image so that when I press this in the heat press, it will sublimate ink onto every part of the mouse pad. So it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Then I use this heat transfer tape. Once I have it lined up, I use this heat transfer tape to make sure that it doesn't slip or slide around when I put it onto the heat press. So now it's going to make sure that's centered as we press it. As the uh, heat press is heating up, I want to show you, I bought this model here for multiple reasons. One is it swivels, which is actually very handy because then you can place your work on the pad and then you don't have to disturb it. So this is almost to heat. If you lower it, it will get hotter faster. We're doing this outside. One of the reasons why I'm doing this outside is that neoprene starts to smoke and emit gas around 195 degrees. We're going to be heating this up to 380 degrees. And so I've had multiple mouse pads that start smoking and it really is a toxic gas that you're breathing in. So you want to make sure wherever you do this, you have adequate ventilation and you don't overheat or spend any more time sublimating your neoprene than you have to. Now, the LED screen on the temperature sensor and what I see in the camera and what I see in real life are different. It's not flickering actually, but it's just the frame rate of the camera. But we're coming up to temperature. Okay, we are at temperature now. So we are going to open it up and place I use a cardboard pad. Basically you want to insulate your substrate surface. And then I'm going to be using a parchment paper sheet on top. You don't want a thin layer, a thick layer. Okay, and then we're going to press and start. And the timer's going. 
Okay, now I'm adding a voiceover because when I pushed the timer button, it didn't actually start the timer. I was planning on going for 30 seconds at 380 degrees. It ended up going for 44 seconds. So you can play with it here and there with the temperature. Some of these run hot, some are a little colder, which means that you'll be leaving it in for longer or less. The longer you leave it in, the darker your image can get, the more sublimation that is happening but you can be burning your uh, printable surface. So you want to pay attention, just kind of work within that time frame. Okay, my timer didn't actually start going off. So we're gonna go ahead and lift it up and take a look. And there is the mouse pads, gorgeous. So I'm just gonna let this sit outside and let it degas for a while instead of bringing it in because it's still kind of steaming. Uh, some of that is from the ink and some of that is from the uh, mouse pad. I don't wanna be breathing any of this while it cools. So we'll just let it sit out here and then we'll, I'll show, we'll go back to the office. Gorgeous, looks really good. So as you can see, the reason why we put this pad around is you can see the ink degassed onto this cardboard. If we didn't have that there, we would have, um, let's see if we can get the angle right here. We would have the ink saturating this permanent pad. I don't want that. I could have also put just the pad of parchment paper above and below, and that sandwiches the ink gas vapor in those layers and prevents it from bleeding. Um, for this, I used the chipboard, cardboard, uh, but you can use parchment on both sides as well. Now, here it is, all packed, ready to go. I'll show you, I've got this plastic sleeve with an adhesive back, so you can just close this envelope perfectly, and a cut piece of chipboard cardboard down to size looks very cool okay i'm going to give away all my secrets here poly mailer keeps it lightweight i have two pieces of board one backing in the bag and then one on the exterior and that will just prevent it from getting any kind of damage seal it up mail it off envelope rate if you trust who's buying it you're worried about it not arriving then you can use tracking but you're just going to pay a little more in shipping so here it is the finished product it turned out beautiful i think chris is going to love it like i said this is a minecraft themed mouse pad and so i'll put a video after this showing you if you're wondering how this is possible to do minecraft themed products in the uh, video at the end but also, if you want more videos on dye sublimation in general, printing in general, I this whole tech channel, right now I'm just getting into dye sublimation printing, but I have decades of experience in doing professional printing all the way just to exploring. I'm just practicing with dye sublimation right now, but I also have 3D printing. We're going to be doing laser cutting, engraving, and etching printing, all that stuff. And, of course, the dye and the pigment ink stuff as well. So thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the section below. If it's a question, I can do... This, is, this video was a reply to somebody who asked me to do a step-by-step -step dye sublimation. So I'm going to be doing more products, uh, dye sublimating things in the future. So if you want to know how to dye sublimate different substrates, different materials, I will be doing that. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this was good for you and have a great day.